Hello and welcome to Wasted Potential, the show where we discuss the wasted potential of our favourite plot lines. With MK11 now being out, I thought it might be fun to revisit a few of the existing MK episodes and see how those stories could have progressed into the new game. I need to do this now before we move on to the Lin Kuei saga and attempt to fix MK11 itself. While we're here, let's also go over how I feel the characters were handled and whether or not they live up to their potential in MK11. Nether Realm Invasion well, the story of MKX was mostly ignored, aside from Shinnok's decapitation and Scorpion and Sub-Zero burying the hatchet. Dark Raiden is erased in Chapter 2, and the Revenants have even less personality and act as generic minions of Kronika. Seriously, how is Katana okay working alongside Shao Kahn, even if she is corrupted? If she can't look at the big picture enough to consider her and the others' deaths as a better outcome than Shao Kahn's victory in Armageddon, then I doubt she could consider working alongside the man who murdered her father and led her mother to suicide as for the best either. Wasted. There'd be quite a few changes brought about by my MKX having happened like the lack of combat kids in Revenants. I suppose Dark Raiden still happens allowing Liu Kang to try to restore him to his old self the way the Thunder God did for him last time. Kronika could probably pull Revenants, Wraith and Cyberize versions of characters from various points giving her evil versions of most of the heroes as minions. This would allow us to keep the heroic versus villainous clashes but they'd all get mirror matches instead of only like 5. Perhaps the Fire God Liu Kang concept could be a merger of the evil Raiden and Liu Kang instead, serving as the final boss in place of Kronika, who I hear is not a very good boss fight. Kronika is killed and Raiden either dies or becomes purified, warning that Armageddon may yet come to pass. Melina. She's not in the game. She's mentioned occasionally by Kotal and Devorah, Shao Kahn is uncharacteristically upset about her death, and Katana has her weapons now for some reason. Wasted. Naturally, Melina and her followers are recruited into Katana's forces. Katana gets caught up on Melina's story and seeks her out, even if only to get help convincing Baraka to join her. Melina could even be happy to see both a living Baraka and a not undead Katana. She likely thinks it's a trick until Katana defeats her because some fights have to happen, prompting her to join Katana's cause. She's been advised by Ermac and Scarlet that Shao Kahn is on the wrong side here and that, though she's loath to do so, she has to help defeat him to unite Outworld against Kronika. Maybe she has a Harley Quinn-like addiction to Khan, finding herself conflicted about turning on him once she's actually in his presence. Either way, at the arena, she fights her childish past self and we see how much more mature and wise Melina is now. This could lead to her becoming an advisor or bodyguard for Katana Khan. Alternatively, she could join up with the Revenants and serve Kronika, becoming genuinely close to Revenant Katana through her service. This could lead to her betraying the Revenants once past Katana convinces her that Revenant Katana is just using her. This results in past Katana coming to accept Melina genuinely. Sindel. Aside from one exchange between past Katana and Khan, Sindel isn't even mentioned in the story. There's no explanation for where her revenant is either, so there's no confrontation between past Katana and her undead mother. Sindel is currently rumoured to be one of the upcoming DLC fighters, with allegedly leaked pre-fight dialogue suggesting several horrendous retcons to her character and death. It could be bullshit, but would you really put it past them? Wasted. We ended her episode with three possible outcomes. We'll discuss each of those here while also noting that Kronika could have pulled MK3 Sindel in or brought over her MK2 remains which are then reanimated and mind controlled by the Revenants to bribe Shao Kahn with. 1. She saved Katana from being a Revenant and is working with Outworld's ruler to give the Edenians protection. Shao Kahn's return throws a spanner into the works and Sindel and Katana have to, depending on who won last time, either help Kotal overthrow Khan and pass Sindel, or convince Melina to turn against him through their much stronger relationship. They likely need to get both to work together to topple Khan's regime either way. Khan is killed by Katana and Sindel together, making his defeat a little less baffling. 2. She failed to get through to Katana who is now working for Kronika. Past Katana joins present Sindel while past Sindel is often seen alongside present Katana. They have their clash resulting in present Sindel taking a mortal wound for past Katana. The shock of this snaps past Sindel out of her trance which could also lead to the redemption of present Katana. Honouring Sindel's sacrifice, Katana and whoever was restored by her death lead the outworld Edenian army into battle in the climax. 3. Katana's slave Sindel is joined by past Sindel with both serving the villain side until they're confronted by Katana, who is able to free her past mother but may have to put an end to her present mother to free her. Ermac. 
He just dies in the crypt. He has a character model and even a new look, so I don't see why they didn't include him in the scene where Katana's forces confront Khan in Chapter 7. Present Eren Black makes his one appearance here, so I don't see why Ermac and Reptile couldn't join in as well. Wasted. As previously stated, Ermac would be one of Melina's advisors and would join up with Katana alongside her. He fights his past self at the arena, perhaps freeing him from Khan's control, similar to how Kenshi did the same for him in the first timeline. Or we could also use the dual Ermax idea with Ermac Khan trying to take the Ermac souls he's missing from past Ermac, which causes all kinds of problems leading to a merger of all three Ermacs into one massive collective. He could be the one to kill Khan before possibly joining the final battle as an army of spirits similar to his Armageddon ending. Though I'm sure Netherrealm would just have him get captured by Kronika and his soul siphoned into the hourglass to power it. I did predict he'd have an unceremonious death and that's no more unceremonious a death than what he's actually given in the crypt. Maybe I'm the one with psychic powers. Kung Lao. It's good to see him getting some love again. His rivalry with Liu Kang is pretty much ignored, but he's oddly the character with the best quips. Kitana Khan. She's now officially out of your league. Not wasted. Not much would really change for Kung Lao with my take, other than him being a bit less prone to overt frustration. Maybe his revenant form is more pissy about his loss in life, more in line with his Shaolin Monk's persona, trying to taunt his younger self about it, only to be rebuked as immature by his true self. Special Forces Jin and Takeda are absent. Takeda is planning to marry Jackie according to pre-fight dialogue, but where he is is unclear. Jin now exists as a tool for Netherrealm to show how accepting Lao is without having to actually write a scene about it. He's also been retconned into Lao's nephew for some fucking reason. Jackie and Cassie have slightly more defined personalities than last time, though Cassie is still a significantly more serious character in the story than in pre-fight dialogue. 50% wasted. Well, Jin and Takeda would be in the fucking game for one. Jin has some interesting interactions with Liu Kang and Kung Lao, who are stunned to see young Jin as a mighty warrior now. He joins Lao in Chapter 3, and the player chooses between Jin and Lao to fight Revenant Lao, while the other fights Liu Kang. This then allows us to have true Kung Lao versus corrupted Kung Lao, as well as Kung Jin versus his fallen idol. It's shocking that we never got that in either game. How did this happen? Takeda could help to turn past Scorpion to the side of good, and probably joins Jackie and Jax on their journey to the island, having all kinds of awkward banter with MK2 Jax. Jackie and past Jax get a fight with Devora as further payback for what she did to present Jax last time. And they can probably kill her instead of just letting her get away after murdering Scorpion. Fuck this character. Present Jax himself is augmented by Kronika even further than in the real game thanks to his previous injuries. Maybe a bit more along the lines of Garrus. And Cassie... well, I guess she'd be pretty much the same, honestly. Liu Kang. It's good that he's the hero again, and his relationship with Katana gets a little more focused than usual. But his revenant form has zero personality and the most paper-thin motivation of all time now. You could replace him with any villain that hates Raiden and bugger all would change. 50% wasted. Liu Kang, having not attempted to kill anyone yet since Kung Lao's death was prevented, finds himself conflicted about that here. He worries that this could lead him down the same dark path that his future self has already gone down. This can go one of two ways. 1. His first kill is his own future self, ensuring an end to his dark destiny if it cannot be averted entirely. Kung Lao and Katana then ask him to do the same to them should the opportunity arise, which he is notably more conflicted about. 2. If he doesn't kill his future self, then he is hesitant to kill Kronika, which could then determine the ending. Instead of losing a round being the criteria that leads to the not-as-good ending, failing to perform a fatality input after the first fight is instead, as it gives Kronika a chance to recover and get further along with her plan. As Raiden warns before the fight, Liu Kang has to put aside his own morals and principles for the good of the universe. Raiden he has some of his competence back, but again, Dark Raiden is wasted, despite being the default version of him in the game and the marketing. And there's no reconciliation between Dark Raiden and Revenant Liu Kang. The whole thing is just resolved with the past versions who don't hate each other. The entire arc of the schism between the two characters goes fucking nowhere. Wasted. It's hard to say what ruinous consequences the initially darker Raiden might have caused in his attempt to prevent Armageddon, so let's assume that events played out largely the same as in the canon and didn't diverge significantly until MKX. Having joined Shinnok last time, this Raiden is now on Kronika's side, helping Cetrion to kill the Elder Gods. 
Naturally, there's tension between him and his Revenant allies, but this version of Raiden actually has some backbone and tells the Revenant straight up that what he did during the fight against Shao Kahn was for the greater good and the realms would be in a much worse situation if he hadn't done so. So quite frankly, they are acceptable losses and they can get stuffed. Kronika bringing MK2 Raiden through time does not erase the present version because that's fucking stupid. Instead, we have two Raidens. Seeing his future once again changes his viewpoint, this time with past Raiden seeing his future as a minion of Shinnok and Kronika, and vowing to put a stop to himself because the one thing any version of Raiden other than the current one can agree on is that Shinnok is evil and has to be stopped. Being quite pragmatic, he contemplates killing himself to erase his future self, but knowing that he could have easily come back by then, chooses not to risk removing the good side's thunder god without being 100% sure it would do the same for the evil sides. The two Raidens could merge at the end, becoming an Elder God level MK1-ish Raiden who is powerful enough to stop Cetrion and Kronika. He then uses the Hourglass to erase all the gods, excluding Fujin, who is left to watch over the mortals of Earth and keep them safe in a way Raiden never could. But one could argue that everyone got 100% wasted thanks to everyone aside from Raiden, Liu Kang and Katana being erased from existence at the end. And I hear that the gameplay is actually quite good, but when placed alongside a story this bad, all I can really say is Mortal Kombat itself. Fucking wasted. I may do something like this again once MK12 comes out, but until then I've still got plenty of new topics to cover, like the Lin Kuei in a six part series, and MK11 in a four part series and Shao Kahn, and Fujin, and half the rest of the cast. If you liked this video, why not subscribe and support me on Patreon like these fine people here? If not, then make sure to share it with your enemies so they can suffer along with you.